Hey folks, how we doing? So happy 4th of July everybody. I hope everybody's enjoying their family nice and peace and you know being happy. So I want to show you a couple before I ship them off. One is a little upgrade for a customer. One of my best customers, probably the best customer actually, Brock asked me. He really liked my kind of engraving, carving of that rustic Molon Labe in my knife and the one before and asked me if I would consider doing it on his and I said I would be happy so he sent it in and I did it for him so I really like it I, you guys can obviously see Molon Labe means a lot to me people that don't know I still keep getting asked what it is is Molon Labe it's what Spartan told Persians when Persians tell them to give out their weapons Spartan t said come and take them so you know it has it has a lot of different meanings really if you think about that the whole story behind it but it's just probably the best described is just never give up don't give up i think just most fitting and just simple as one it and obviously it's a kind of motto of a lot of gun owners people that believe in the freedom so it means a lot to me and uh it's kind of funny that's such a meaningful phrase to me and so many people don't even know it actually not even many old gun owners don't even know it it's, it's interesting but you know now you know guys at least those that watch so got that for him i did this one couple days back so it's new large flipper with the backspacer kind of like i did on mine i had a couple of the large flippers with backspacer too you're gonna see them here as well so did this one this one has also different pocket clip it works perfect but I still like the simple pocket clip better. It gives me more freedom. I can contour it even more and still fit the pocket. Still have that little bit of uh, flat area there to put the pocket clip on. This is obviously almost twice as wide. So I actually am a little more limited. I cannot do this, this chamfer as heavy. Same, have to be careful on the top so I don't you know, end up with too much of a pig here like where the, back uh, where the pocket clip should, should fit. But it, it does it does look nice. I really, really like the pocket clip too. I have a couple of those, so you might see them, a couple of them in the future. So you see, just nice kind of like I had the idea of milled in groove, and then there is a little kind of like a bark pattern on the inside, which I think came out pretty cool. And you have the same thing on the other side. The pocket clip is done kind of similar way, but it's not milled in. It's just on the the leftover thread from uh, flat from the two radiuses you have the little bit of bark texture there and uh, just nice nice switch sodding grind switch really good action on this it has such a nice detent that it's not too hard and you just push backwards and it just flies like a rocket really cool combination of not having a crazy strong detent but it just it just rockets out like crazy so really like that then I did this one, which was another cool idea I had, I think cool, uh, was iffy, because as I was doing it into the titanium, it looked really bad on the, on the raw titanium, without any finish, in any anodizing, sandblast, stonewash, nothing, it looked really bad. But once I put those finishes on it, that sandblast and anodizing and stonewash, it came out, I think, really cool. So you have this kind of... There is a system in it, kind of, it's random, but there is a system purposely breaking the patterns of the of the engravings or carvings or whatever you want to call it. So it creates kind of like a systematic, I call it alien, it all started off with the backspacer. You see that reminds me of an alien like tail or spine. So that started the whole idea and that's actually titanium, it just, I made it look like it's kind of black, almost like zirconium. Same with the pocket clip. If you look at it, it really does look like zirconium wood, but it's titanium. So it started off my whole idea of being the alien team, and I was thinking, what should I do on the flats here to kind of go with that team? And I had that idea of doing it, making it look almost like an alien skin. And I think it came out pretty cool. You can see there that it's just, I think, interesting. It's not not complicated, not hard, but it's interesting enough, and it has enough uniformity in it that it I think it looks good I don't know you guys tell me what you think and uh, this one has what a little bit of jimping nice switch this one is a little different than I normally do that this one I try to go start almost like from the zero and then it kind of gets wider 
so that was interesting I actually like that when it kind of starts off at zero and then gets wider and wider and then meets at the tip nicely kind of about the same thickness or width of the switch as the width of the edge on the bottom so that's slightly reinforced tip so that one and this one this one still needs work because I overshot the lag a little bit everything is really nice about it it has really smooth action you have kind of like a two-tone finish on it you see that bluish and then I actually first time I did this it's ran the peaks on the scotch bright and ran the outsides on the scotch bright and stone wash and then in the bronze color anodization so it I think it's pretty cool a little different pack uh, the backspacer is also that kind of like a bark pattern backspacer a little bit of milling here kind of matching pocket clip and uh, now this one is it's really smooth super super smooth but what I overshot is is the lock it doesn't look bad because it looks okay 50% or something like that not that bad but the way it's engaging it's it's just biting in too hard you know kind of like extremely sticky lock it's just because of the angles the angle is like kind of like too straight on so when it goes there it goes there just straight on and it just gets stuck super secure but a little too secure it's hard to disengage so what I have to do is I have to replace my stop in for uh, slightly slightly larger diameter that will kind of instead of opening this position it will open just microscopically downward that will give me the little bit extra material that I can just correct put the correct angle there and you know do it but just incredibly smooth one of the reasons probably is because I went back and I did the two-tone finish when I polished up on the fine belt the uh, the flats which always makes the knife a lot smoother when you do that it's just tricky it's I'm always scared to do that but came out pretty cool I think once I fix it it's gonna be really cool knife really good knife incredibly smooth that's <laughs> incredibly it was really a bummer for me you now seeing how well it works you know and finding out that the lag is just just a little too because it over, over a period of build you know I set the lock on the beginning and then all, when, as you work with it it actually still settles in and you flip it hundreds of times and disengage you hundred, hundreds of times so it actually settles in by the time you're done most of, the, most of the time it actually is settled in nicely but this one was just not settling in correctly <laughs> it is because I did the, it's not enough radius it's too straight there so that's it guys and uh, just to let you know I still love this <laughs> it's just such an incredible knife Frank Fisher I cannot wait to meet you man <laughs> cannot wait to meet you definitely one of my favorite knives you know with along with my knives Jeff Stanix and Elliot's knives the stuff that I have from Elliot definitely my fav favorite four knives and just cool guy so far I've been talking to him I think we're gonna hit it off when we get together so guys, thank you for watching, thank you for all the support, like I said, enjoy the 4th of July, take care, stay safe, and remember, don't cut yourself.